Good morning, brothers and sisters, in the hall and at home. May the peace of God be with all of you. And again, we are always very um, grateful to the Lord that we can meet in such measures, even. Of course, we all like to have a full face to face fellowship, but we have to bear with all this all these years, uh, these months. Anyway, uh, Truly, truly, it is good to come together and worship God because uh, you will find, of course, uh, being used to it in those uh, non-pre-pandemic time, we don't feel it. But now, of course, with what's been missing, we feel it even more. And so it's always glad that we can worship the Lord together. This morning, our speaker is Pastor Tamil, Matt Tamil Chevin from Butterworth. And his wife is with us here as well. You can't see those of you who are at home, Big Fun is here as well. A very warm welcome to both of you. And of course, uh, right, and uh, Pastor Chep, Tamil Chevin, uh, it's not just a, a, a minister. Uh, I find him kind, understanding, generous, and always full of faith. And it's a great encouragement to me always to fellowship with him. So without any further ado, we will have Pastor Tamil Chevin. Hallelujah. Oxygen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, Ribo Sukha Mahaya Ledo Kuste. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, thank you for inviting us, Pastor. Very happy to be here with you. A bit strange to behind, be behind the big shield of faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming today. Having the boldness to come, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Yeah? <clears throat> Father, we thank you for the open heaven. We thank you for the glory that's filling this place. And upon all who are under the sound of our voice right now, thank you, Master Jesus. We now meet. Be our Lord and King and Savior here. Heal, deliver, bless. Mighty Holy Spirit, welcome in this house. Move, Lord, with your gifts, your anointing, your blessings, your revelation. Bless us this morning. Thou speak, Lord. And we will listen in Jesus' marvelous name we pray. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Well, it's a, it's a pleasure to be in Malacca, hometown, and to you know, begin to preach in English because I speak in Mandarin all the time. Praise the Lord. Are you, are you all happy? Yeah, because you know, it's hard to tell now because of the mask on. And those who are online, welcome, welcome, welcome. God bless you. Hallelujah. This morning, Pastor, how long I have? Uh, 40 minutes, huh? so you give me signal, yeah? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, yeah. As you can see, the, the, the world is evolving. Huh? Huh? It's evolving to a different world. It has been evolving ever since, but the evolution is becoming, not evolution, huh? I mean the changes, are becoming more apparent to us in these days, and it's going to continue to change. If you know the, 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 the prophecy in the book of, Daniel, you know, the big idol Nebuchadnezzar saw from gold to silver to uh, bronze to iron to clay. So the kingdom of man is decaying, yeah? So things are going to get, um, they're going to evolve, huh? yeah? Pian uh, hua, and then become a hua, huh? in Chinese we say, it's getting bad. So, my point is this. We need to be led by the Spirit of God in these days to be able to live successfully and to be able to extract everything that God has given us through Christ Jesus. In the past, you can be very worldly and still live a very successful, happy life because the world was still livable. Hmm. Still livable, you can still uh, sow and reap, so to speak. If you're smart, you, are work, you work hard, you can continue to go on with life. But the world is becoming, uh, is evolving to a place where you'll find that the, the techniques technology, capabilities that you use before to extract goodness from the world and the world system will no longer work that well as time proceeds, as you can see by now. So this is a time you go to live by the kingdom of God, by faith extracting the blessings of God, over or overriding or superseding the world's situation. Something like the people of Israel, when they were going through the, the wilderness, they, 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 they were going through a wilderness where you can't plant, you can't sow and reap. But because they obeyed God, you know, God supplied bread from heaven, manna. You know the story, right? Yeah, the, 
the, the Jewish people, they will say, Baruch atha Adonai Elohinu milcha olama motzei lechei min ha'ares. They mean, it's the way they, they, they say blessing for their food. Say, blessed art thou, O King of heaven, and all who found bread from the earth, min ha'ares. But that earth could not bring food for them. But because they follow the God of heaven in faith, obeying his word, and learning one lesson for 40 years. My goodness, I haven't started my sermon yet. Never mind. For 40 years, and that, le- and that lesson was, man shall not live by... No, if you try to, you'll be in big trouble. But shall live by every rematos, that, uh, every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. So, for 40 years, God was teaching them, if you listen to me, obey me, and do what I say, you do not have to depend on this soil to get your bread. I can rain down bread from heaven. The, the time has come for you to connect to heaven properly because the resources of this world are either not available, are reducing, or oh, all will become more and more difficult for you to access. The young people in our church in Butterworth, Butterworth and Penang are doing very well in spite and despite these uh, MCO situations. You know, one guy had nine-month bonus. Can you believe it? I actually asked him, are you exaggerating in any way? He got nine-month bonus. Dear God in heaven. Yeah. And all the young people are doing very well. They, they have bonuses. They got raises. None of them lost, lost a job. No. <coughs> Because we've been teaching them how to live by faith, to trust God. And living by faith and walking in the Spirit are one and the same thing, synonymous. Hallelujah. You can't walk in the Spirit without walking in faith, because walking in faith is to believe what God said, and the one who said is the Holy God. Yeah, I won't sidetrack. Huh? So come back to my point. So you need to be led by the Holy Spirit. I came to Malacca Friday. I went, to, went home. My mother's feet were swollen. She has diabetes. I better don't say online now. That's okay, yeah. Yeah, and other problems. So you will suspect kidney, heart, and so on. But when I reached home, suddenly I, I felt, no, no, it's a medical medicine problem. You know, amaldopine. Amaldopine is one drug they use for blood, for blood pressure control. At certain higher dosages, it will cause water retention. It hit me. So I told them, go and talk to the doctor. And the doctor said, yeah, that's the case. And change the medicine for her. What is that? You feel the leading of the Holy Spirit in you. You must be led by the Spirit of God in this end time to be able to live like the sons and daughters of God and not just like mere men. 1 Corinthians, Paul says, you are behaving like mere men. Are you not men? You are more than men and women. You are born again, new creature. Hallelujah. Recreated in the likeness and image of God. Hallelujah. And when you begin to put the word of God in your mouth and launch it out, the creation will hear like God is talking. You're not God. You're just like a vapor, very, very heavy. Some vapor heavy, some light. Huh? <laughs> some big vapor, some small vapor. But still, when you speak the word of God, because you're children of God, you will sound like God to the creation. Okay, let's not go there. So this morning, I want to draw your attention to one Important truth, you must be led by the Holy Spirit who dwell in you for you to be successful, victorious, overcoming, and not only that, and to reveal Christ in this dark world. It is mandatory, it is no longer a choice. In the past, you can say, my church, don't believe in this, and get away with it. With other, other you know, help of the world and natural help or natural uh, tools. You can no longer, because the world has come to a place where if you don't follow the Holy Spirit, you'll find that you will suffer and have difficulties and have shortcomings and, and uh, hurdles, and pro- just like the non-believer. Amen? So tonight, uh, this morning, this morning, yeah, I'm going to briefly, because this is a big subject, because it's a very exciting subject, I'm going to briefly share with you a few things to help you and to facilitate you to begin to be led by the Spirit of God. Let's go to Romans 8, 14. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take a pen and paper and write down what I'm going to say because it is impossible for you to digest everything and remember everything and then go back with it. Yeah, It, it, it will be vaporized sometimes before you come out of the, leave the, leave the building. Those who are online, praise the Lord, put down your pizza, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, take a pen and a paper, start writing. It's Romans 8, 14 says this. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, 
They are the sons of God, not children only, but mature sons of God. Now, I, I won't go into the son part, but the, 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 the speciality, the uniqueness, the special attribute in us is that we, uh, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So, we are the sons of God, daughters of God, yeah? We are to be led by, we, we must be led by the Spirit of God to be led by God so that we will be able to display the wonderful works of God in this world so that while you are on earth, you can have days of heaven upon the earth. Not days of hell upon the earth. People say, my life is like hell. Yeah, yeah, because you're connected to the wrong wire. Hmm. Once you connect to the Holy Spirit, you can leave the days of heaven upon the earth. But if you connect to the spirit of fear, you will begin to experience a foretaste of hell while you are on earth. Hallelujah. Anyway, so as children of God, sons of God, we are to be led by the Spirit of God because therein lies the speciality and that's the domain. As you're led by the Spirit of God, now God can do for you wonderful things that you can't do for yourself and others cannot do for you. And God can... Pre you, you must be led by the Spirit of God to walk into God's promises and blessings and plans and to walk away, <coughs> escape, escape, get away from the devil's traps and snares and mischiefs. The Holy Ghost will lead you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, having said that, the point is this. How does the Holy Spirit lead you? Look at verse 16. This is not the main point, but this is where we start. For the Holy Spirit, for the Spirit Himself, or the Bible itself, because in the Greek, uh, Spirit is neuter, not masculine or feminine. Uh -huh. For the Spirit Himself, the Spirit Himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So, and then if you go to Galatians 4, 6, the Bible says, Since you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son, the Holy Spirit, into our hearts, crying, Abba, 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 Abba. These two verses tell us, as a born-again Christian, the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, lives permanently in your born-again human spirit, and He's always talking, Abba. Of course, He's not only saying Abba, He's always talking. He's always talking, and He's always witnessing inside you, trying to commune with you, communicate with you, trying to guide you, lead you, speak to you, teach you, warn you, admonish you, and to instruct you. Hallelujah. So, understand this. The voice and the guidance and the witness of the Holy Spirit is not outside you. Don't look for a burning bush now. Because God lives inside in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, they go look for outside because God was outside man in the Old Testament. The greatest thing happened in the New Testament. One of the greatest is God now lives inside you and you are the temple of God. 1 Corinthians 3.16 So, most of the time, God will lead from, lead from inside. Inside, not outside, inside. Even when you feel manifestations of the outside, it is connected to the inside somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, most of the time, God guides you from inside because He's inside. God talks in your spirit because He lives in your spirit. These are, you know, all these things I think coming from Gateway. Yeah, you, you know all these things. Yeah, but I'm building up to what I want to say. So, Hmm. So, 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 yeah. So, the Holy Spirit is inside you, stalking, witnessing. But, most Christians, after so many years being a Christian and a pastor, most Christians are oblivious, oblivious, right? <laughs> oblivious. Are oblivious. They, are, they, they don't hear, they don't realize, they don't recognize, they are not aware much less are connected to this inner guidance of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the Holy Ghost is inside, talking, guiding, but they don't hear. They are oblivious. Some don't even know the Holy Ghost is talking inside. Because they seldom hear things like this. All they hear is all kinds of funny things. Huh? 6, 6, 6, 7, 7, 7, 8, 8, huh? Which is okay, last. 8, 8, 8 is the T, huh? Oh, but the online cannot. Huh? I can't make many jokes because, you know, you're online. They'll track you down. <laughs> <laughs> You say this. I cannot say I cannot. Is that <laughs> so? Anyway, where was that? So, most Christians, you know this for yourself. He's talking inside you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But how much do you hear him? 
Hardly, hardly. Some never hear him. Most people, Christians, hardly. Once in a while, they recognize. Even that, they push it away as their own imagination, and they go on with their. Whoa! Praise the Lord. It's flexible, huh? Yeah, flexi microphone. So, praise the Lord. So, they, so, 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 because the Holy Spirit is in them. He's talking. Yet they can't hear. You know, the Holy Ghost and His communication or the God's voice is in such close proximity to many Christians, all Christians, yet why so many don't hear? Because the connection is not good. They are disconnected from the Holy Spirit. No, the Holy Ghost never leaves you. New Testament, Holy Spirit will never leave you. Psalm, Psalm 51, uh, cast me not away, blah, blah, blah. take not the Holy Spirit. The one Old Testament, New Testament, He will not leave you. Jesus said so. He will abide with you forever. When you become very naughty, he is grieved and silenced, but he never leaves you. Because if he leaves you, you are no longer a Christian. And he will not leave you because of the blood of Jesus. Yeah? Let's not go there. Yeah? So, he's inside all the time. Yet, although he is inside, most Christians are disconnected. The line is not good. Like your handphone, your smartphone, all kinds of phone. But then when the line is not good... Your microprocessor is not, I mean the inside one, some don't know all these things. Yeah. The, the, the phone is no good. It's no use. Why? Signal tada. The signal is not so good. So many Christians, they are not connected, they, 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 they are not receptive to the signal of the Holy Spirit because of poor connectivity. Poor conductivity. Poor flowability. Poor, you want to say, think for a while. The Holy Ghost is in you. He's talking all the time, man, but you never hear him. Why? You are disconnected from his dynamics, inner dynamics and operations. And tonight, this morning, I want to explain to you how you can improve, enhance, fortify that connection so that you can hear the Holy Spirit Timely, regularly, precisely, and in detail, and to be guided by Him into the great blessings and purposes Christ has for you on earth. The moment the Holy Ghost guides you, your life will be filled with heavenly purposes. Even though ma- most times it guides you in daily affairs, for example, by the Spirit, I knew I will preach this Sunday. Uh, never mind, don't say that. Because huh? Irrelevant. <laughs> Many things. He will, he will lead you. He will guide you. So he will first lead you in daily affairs. Then slowly, you know, daily mana, tomorrow's mana, hidden mana. He said, mana. <laughs> mana, ada mana. Yeah? You know, daily mana, tomorrow's mana, hidden mana. I'll take another hour to speak. Oh, I feel the anointing in this place. Ribo kili masuka bahaya lalando rosti andro kili le elando sti ding ding dandro kosti male nandro ndala kili bakte ar ki bosti di mangri to kolusto elaneste ding dang dong green dili mandle sta ko onosti elemente ingrid hele kia to eleste mbrandro green dili leshi elanosti enangri thili ba ashno ingrid kia alkor dite elapine ingrandrosti malte onosti irden dili kia elabos nangri boke nalasta kiri goshni ri bangre dukho es no kabosti haya elanosti there are some of you either here or online. You have breathing problem or lung-related problems and all that because of... Uh, uh, God will heal you now. Plus, there are some of you either here or online. You are suppressed by the spirit of fear. Your heart is heavy because a spirit of fear is oppressing you. It leaves you right now if you get connected with the Word of God beyond the screen and beyond this shield. Hallelujah. Oh, mamma mia. That's not tongues, that's Italian. Yeah. Anyway, that was I. What was I saying before I was interrupted? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't mana. That one later. So, back to you. So, so now I'm going to tell you how to improve your connectivity so that the, you see, the inner witness, the inner voice, the Inner dynamics of the Holy Spirit all transpires in your spirit because it lives in your spirit. 
That's why, okay, let's not go very far because I only focus on this one. So, so it's all happening inside here. The Holy Ghost talks here. In other words, your spirit, your spirit, your spirit is your post, is God's post box. Your spirit is God's mailbox. He puts all the message there. You're going to retrieve from there. You understand? So how to connect with the Holy Spirit? So, so I repeat, follow me. The Holy Spirit is witnessing to your spirit that you are children of God. So the Holy Spirit's communication, guidance, and I better don't, I'm very tired. Huh? <laughs> Holy Spirit's communication and the Holy Spirit's guidance, and are they all, <laughs> and then they are, they are all, they all reside in your spirit. But, but for some reason, you as a triune being often disconnected to your own spirit and therefore disconnected to the dynamics of the Holy Spirit. How to get connected and bring this up? Look at Colossians 3.16. Oh, if you will get this, we can go back already. Which is not very hard, by the way. Praise the Lord. Colossians 3.16. So those of you with lung problems, breathing problems, panic attacks, hmm? Attack the panic. Those who have panic attack, start attacking the panic. Huh? Never mind, that was a long story. Colossians. Ah, so those of you are being set free today. You don't have to lay hands. Well, I'd be glad to lay hands and see what kind of cream you're using, but... Are you guys around here, yeah? You're all very depressed and all, huh? Looks like I'm the only one happy. <laughs> Often get that feeling, you know. Online people rejoice in the Lord. You know, this is funny. Paul is writing from the prison to the guys outside the prison. And he's saying, hey, rejoice. And, I, and again, I say rejoice. He's in the prison. <laughs> the first outside are depressed. Can you imagine that? So your circumstances do not dictate your feelings, emotions, and your victory. It's what inside you. He said, I am in prison, but the word of God is not in prison. When I speak, the word will go out and do, come back, work, and come back. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. I never, uh, 10, 11. Uh, Colossians 3, 16. Let the word of Christ, hmm, not Google's, Hmm? Not uh, in nowadays, readers digest. Uh, now nobody knows. Uh. Readers digest me, they do some kind of food for digestion. <laughs> read, 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 digest. <laughs> yeah. Let the word of Christ dwell richly. That means what? Not one verse a day. Morning you get up, the phone comes up. Then in, the verse for the day. Uh, uh, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. Oh, already fulfilled, finish. You know? That's not richly. And, you know, to not read the Bible one verse. That's not richly. Rich means in abundance. Bethlehem. Huh? Bethlehem means house of bread. The word of God full. That's why Christ was born there. Let's not go there. Our Christmas message. Yeah. So, let the word of Christ dwell richly. Where? In all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, and singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. He's saying, let the word of Christ, meaning the word of God, dwell richly inside you. Not poorly, richly. That means, let maintain a high inventory of the word of God in your heart. Maintain a high inventory. Huh? Kandungan, high inventory of the Word of God in your heart. High inventory, high concentration of Word of God in your heart. Now, if you're going to have a high inventory of the Word of God in your heart, then your heart will have no place for much of other things. And vice versa. So what is the vice versa? Means, if you have high inventory of, of the other things in your heart, there will be no place for the Word of God in your heart which is the biggest problem in the church. Every other problem is a sequel of this, a result of this, an out, outgrown problem of this, lack of the Word of God. Okay, now let me say this. If you go to a doctor, you say, I'm not well. He does all the examination, blood tests, x-ray, y-ray, huh? everything he does, all the scanning, MRI, magnetic resonance imaging. Huh? 
MRI means magnetic resonance imaging. The image, all the image. And they say, after all this done, he gives you a big packet of magnesium tablets. He says, go back and eat this, you'll be well. What does that mean? Magnesium is cheap? What is your conclusion? Magnesium is cheap, is it? Why he give you? Come on, answer me, no time. Answer lah. Ah, because he knows all your problems are caused by lack of magnesium. Hmm? Magnesium. Likewise, in Psalms 107, the first word, the famous verse, he sent his word and healed them. The Bible says these fellows got sick, the naughty naughty people, and they cried out to God, Oh God, heal us. And when they cried out to God, God gave them a bag of magnesium. No, a bag of he sent his word and healed them. Why? Did he send his word? Same analogy, come on. Yeah! Finish, can go back already. You laugh because you don't believe what I say. You think it's funny. Ah, you can laugh, go ahead. But it's not funny. It's a very serious problem. The devil has brainwashed people to think. <laughs> but this is killing the church. That's what Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. If you try, you won't live long or you live poor, poor, lan, lan. That means, you know, poor, poor, lan, lan means broken and decaying. Poor, poor and the lan, lan is the wonder. Yeah, 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 they understand. They have the gift of interpretation. Praise the Lord. Hmm? Let this sing into your mind because you listen, listen, you go back, you forget everything. Why? The devil steals all the word of God from you, so you never get anywhere. You are back to square one. That's the main problem. You think, oh, the devil attacked me. If you are full of the word of God, the devil will think twice before he attacks you. Because mm. when you open your mouth, it comes out, you know, never mind. So, the word of God, he said, let the word of God dwell richly in you. And then he goes on to explain what will happen, the result, the consequences, consequences, oh, <laughs> the consequences, the result of a high inventory. The word, remember inventory, huh? is just, it's just like that, inventory, keep it there. Keep it there. As long as it is there, something is transpiring. If not, you are expiring. It's called aging. Really, yeah, Pastor? Yeah. No time. Never mind. Never mind. Huh? He shall meditate upon the word of God day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the streams of river. His leaves shall not anti-aging. Huh? Ah, anti okay, yeah. So when the word of God is full, your when, the, when your heart is full of the word of God, high inventory, the result is what? Please follow me in the scriptures. Now, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. There is a lot of word of God, deep word of God, high quality word of God. Mm -hmm. ah. Hebrews 6, 5, the good word, not the good food from the good earth, but the good word. Huh? <laughs> yeah, so then the result is teaching. Hey, something coming out from you now. Just now, you were putting the word of God inside, you were sowing inside, you were depositing, you were infilling the word of God inside. Huh? The result is now something coming out. Teaching and admonishing one another in what? You see your Bible, la, my face, no scripture. Huh? In what? Come on, guys. Psalms and hymns and... Oh, yo, 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 yo. Hymns and psalms are not from the book, actually. Are from... Uh, okay, look at the word... Spiritual songs. Let me ask you a question. Only one. Spiritual songs come from where? Think first. I come from Penang for now. I know, actually, I come from Melaka. Huh? Okay, wrong story. Yeah. Spiritual songs come from which part of you? Huh? Oh, you all passed already. Go back already. Spiritual songs come from your? From your? Not from your? Yeah, not from your body. From your spirit. See, yeah, yeah, what's the big deal? The big deal is this. And, and spiritual songs are coming from your spirit. From your spirit. And, and who produced that in your spirit? FM? AM? Radio? 
Who produced? Oh, Holy Spirit in your spirit, producing spiritual songs, and it's now coming out of you. As a result of you, filling your heart with the written word of God, the content of your spirit is being emptied out for you to receive and access and understand and apply in your life. You follow me or not? You sow the word of God, you reap the voice of God out of you. You pump that. Your spirit got a lot of things inside. The fruit of the spirit, gifts of the spirit, all inside that is not in your head because that's what the Holy Ghost is. That's why the Bible keeps telling you, walk in the spirit, pray in the spirit, sing in the spirit, and come back speaking, speaking and understanding. So the guidance, and plus Romans 8, 16 says, the Holy Ghost witness to your spirit. So his witness, which is his guidance, resides in your Spirit. So when you fill your heart with the Word of God, the content, the content of your human spirit, which is, which are the dynamics of the Holy Spirit, begin to rise up and being made available to your senses to hear, to feel, and to be led by. Do you understand? Do you understand? It's a tremendous truth because now you know what to do. In my young days, they say, brother, flow with the Spirit. Christ, flow, flow, flow with the Spirit. How to flow? Diet yourself. If I'm dead, then how? You know, all this, diet yourself. Flow with the Spirit. Yield, yield, how to yield. <laughs> how to yield, yield. Huh? I've, been, I've been in the church for a long time, you know. These people will come lay hands. Brother, you yield, 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 yield. I don't know what to do. Uh, many of you are very quiet, basically because the mask is on your face, but also this is your own predicament, but you didn't tell people. You see people shaking. Some rolling, and you are. When I was young, I'm still young, but when I was much younger, I was a fresh graduate from University of Malaya, and I was working in Singapore, attending a big, big church. Charismatic church. I mean, it was charismatic to the max. You know. You know. Huh? Okay. So, you know, my pastor will blow. I think you know him. Huh? Huh? People will, fall, about 700 people, all will fall, blah, 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 except me now. We're watching all falling down. Blah, 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 blah. And when all fall, I'll be the one standing. <laughs> You know, and then they will shake, vibrate, and real Holy Spirit, huh? I'm not making fun. I was new, nah. I don't know. I came to the Lord 13 years old in Malacca. Then I went my own way until 25 years old. Huh? I remember the church. Yeah. Oh, they will vibrate, shake. Say, oh, I feel the fire. Oh, I feel the electricity. I'm behind beside them. I don't feel anything, you know. Except the icon, you know. Oh, you know. So this went on for some time. But in my personal life, I was very victorious. I get answered prayers. The devil is afraid of me, although I don't know that. <laughs> I was doing very well, but I don't have these Holy Ghost feelings, you know. The goosebumps upon the goosebumps and the electricity and the hot oil and all kinds, of, and they will run or flow, prophesy, prophesy, speak in tongues. So one day after some time, I prayed. I said, Lord Jesus, all your sons and daughters are very, very spirit prone. Not drone, spirit prone. To the point of becoming like a drone. I like mutho. Uh. Uh, what is mutho? Um, kayu. Uh. In Penang, kayu is a Masikanda shop, but this is kayu. Uh. A bomb in the log. Uh, sounds bad. Huh? Yeah. I said, Lord, how can I feel your Holy Spirit? That's why I feel. I pray. Like, everybody say, I feel, I feel, I feel good. No. I don't feel anything. But I get answered prayers. God talked to me. All kinds of things happen. These people, they only have feeling, nothing else. I didn't know that. Later I discover. Lah. Yeah. So Lord, how do I feel your Holy Spirit? Like that, the Lord Jesus spoke to me and showed me the story of Jesus turning water into wine. Not wine into water, that's what everybody can do. Huh? Turn water, wine to wine, just keep pouring water, become water. It's called the leaching process. Huh? Yeah. When I was in third year university, chemical engineering, I had to study mass transfer. And one part of it was a leaching process, how to leach. Yeah, so, 
Jesus turned water into wine. You know, in the Bible, water has three meanings. At least three meanings. You, but how much time I have? Huh? One meaning, every time, you see, every time you see water as rain, as dew, as river, as springs, as fountain, it is the symbol of Holy Spirit. When you see water as a big body of water, like a big pond, big sea, it's a symbol of lost humanity, lost people. But when you see water used for washing, it always symbolizes the Word of God because Ephesians 5, 26 says, wash with the water of the Word of God. Yeah? So these six water pots Christ used to turn water into wine, they were used to hold water for washing ceremonies. So the Lord Jesus just spoke to me in scriptures. He said, pour and fill your life, your heart, uh, with the water of the Word of God to the brim. He said, suddenly you will begin to taste and feel the wine of the presence and the power and the dynamics of my Holy Spirit. Ooh. Sometimes the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Boom! Sometimes people lay hands on you, the power comes and so on. But other times, you can't activate it. He's not your servant. He's God Almighty. You can't say, Holy Ghost, now feel me. Sometimes it does, sometimes it won't. But you can always, always access, no, access the Holy Spirit through the Word of God, which is one of the main reasons, one of the, God gave the Word of God. He, or you, I'm, I'm, I'm deviating, never mind, never mind, yeah. Example, Psalms 1, the one who meditates the Word of God ends up like a tree where? 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 Come on, where? What is stream? Holy? Holy water? Holy? Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so back to our topic here. When you fill your heart with the Word of God, suddenly the content of your human spirit, which is, which are the sound, voice, communication of the Holy Spirit, begin to float, rise above your spirit to your senses. And you are now connected to the Holy Spirit. Are you following me? Now you can taste the wine which was inside because you poured enough water of the Word inside. Huh? You follow me? The key is this. Fill your heart with the Word of God abundantly. You will never die of overdosage. The more the Word of God in you, the, the greater is the connectivity to the Holy Spirit, and you become more and more compatible to the Holy Ghost and to God. You are waiting for God to talk to you. God is waiting for you to become ready to, talk, to be talked to. You know, Job, not your friend, the Bible Job. Job was in trouble, right? But he's a good man. And, and she was complaining, I want to find God and talk to Him. I want to find God to discuss my matter. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Finally, God shows up. You know what God says first? Gird up your loins. I'm going to talk to you. I will, I will ask you, answer me thou. Yes or no? The, when God shows up and talks to Job in the whirlwind, He said, hey, gird up your loins. That means what? Uh, tie up your loins. is hip. Huh? huh? Get up your loins. I'm going to talk to you now. What do you mean, get up your loins? In 1 Peter, the Bible says, the loin is your mind. I better don't go there, lah. You know, God was saying, I want to talk to you. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Get ready. I'm going to talk to you. How do you get up your loins? The loins in the Bible is a symbolic picture of the mind in Peter. You know, if you read Peter, the mind, is the loin, is a symbol of mind. Of course, the loin also means other things. Huh? And you gird up your loins with the belt of? Belt of? Yeah. I don't go there. Long story. Point is this. For God to talk to you, you must get prepared. You must get ready. And you are prepared to hear the voice of God by hearing the word of God. The angel showed up to Daniel. Daniel, get ready. I'm going to talk to you. Huh? Oh, yeah, no time. Nah. It's okay, it's okay. Never mind, don't go there. I'm going somewhere else. Back here. So as you fill your heart with the word of God, your spirit, then the connectivity between you and your spirit and you and the Holy Spirit becomes strong. Now the line is true, line clear. 
another one. You understand this, huh? Don't forget Colossians 3.16. For those praise and worship people, they say, oh, worship in truth and uh, in spirit and truth, huh? You saw or not? When you feel your heart richly with the word of God, what is coming out from your spirit? Huh? Ah, these songs are coming from your? Not your? Not your? So, you worship God in truth and in spirit. So, a person who doesn't have enough of the word of God inside cannot experience worshiping in spirit and in truth. You use your mind and sing. So, don't use worship to replace the word of God. You're in big trouble. People enter the car, they put the CD. Singing, 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 no? Put my MP, MP4, my YouTube, my one. Listen to me. It'll do you good. See, a big worship subject, huh? Just like that, once you understand what God is saying. Feel you how the word of God, worship becomes spontaneous. Otherwise, it becomes very strenuous. I was in a seminary once, believe it or not. <laughs> and we had chapel. This girl was song leading, and they were, we were singing. She said, sing from your heart. Come on, sing from your heart. Because she realized this, we are all singing, la, da, la, no? but thinking about the exam to come, you know. Sing from your heart. How to sing from my heart? Where to find my heart? What she means is, somehow your worship is mm, wrong for men. Huh? Dot mind, not dot spirit. Understand? Why? It's coming from your mind. Why? Simple. Your life is void of the word of God. Now, when I talk like this, it may sound very critical. But when you go to see a doctor, is he going to tell you, actually, yeah, nothing wrong with you, is it? He'll tell you, man, what's wrong with you. That's not critical. That's, that's called diagnosis. Why? So that we have, can have a correct prescription and get you on the right path. I'm saying this because I have come to live by this. Unknowingly, I did. I I stumbled onto this. Have you heard this pastor like this? This scripture? Huh? This guy going to come out? Oh, I didn't hear anywhere. I stumbled into this by in my own life. I live by this. So one more. This this truth is all over the Bible. Example. Look at Romans ten. Uh, before that. Finish the scripture. Okay. <laughs> before that. Next truth, huh? Now the Bible says Romans eight sixteen. The Holy Spirit Himself beareth witness to our spirit and uh, let us know, let us know, inform us, talk to us, communicate with us, guide us, lead us to tell us we are the sons of, children of God. Let me ask you, when did this witness begin in you? Come on guys, when? Hey, very simple. When did the Holy Spirit start telling you that you are a child of God? Check a picture please. Under the, the shield of faith. I must show my people, this is how we do it, Malacca. <laughs> quick, 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 I can't smile for a long time. <laughs> yeah. When did, when did this inner witness begin? Come on, guys. Huh? Sorry? When you, when you receive Jesus and God? And God? Lottery. <laughs> when you receive Jesus and God? Come on. God what? God saved or God born? Born again. So, the witness of the Holy Spirit telling, telling you that you are a child of God began when you received Jesus and got born again. Now, how did you got born again? Of course, you will say, by the sinner's prayer. No, what you did was not a prayer. I mean, it's a prayer, but actually it's not a prayer. Romans 10, 10 says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth... Confession is made unto sal salvation. Verse 9 says, If you confess Jesus as Lord and believe with your heart, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe with your heart that God has raised him up from the dead, you shall be saved. So when you believe with your heart, the word of God concerning soteria, salvation, and begin to confess the same word of God con concerning salvation, you get saved, you get born again, correct? Correct. Once you get born again, the inner witness starts saying, you are a child of God, you are a child of God, you are, correct? 
Are we all on the same page? At least the same book? Okay. <laughs> so you see, you believe the word of God, you take it into your heart, you confess it, which is actually a form of meditation. You, you read, you believe, you confess, yeah? Leading to salvation, which led to the beginning of the activation, initiation of the inner witness, right? So when you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth the word of God, that leads to the inner witness of the Holy Spirit concerning the same thing you believed and confessed. Correct? Correct or not? Yeah. So, generalize it. Einstein's special theory to general theory of relativity. It means this. When your heart is full of the word of God and to the point it's overflowing out of your mouth, that, no, okay. This is, so, if that's what initiated the witness, then the same act will also strengthen, fortify, and, and enhance that with, with witness. Meaning, if you spend a lot of time, read the Bible, meditate on it, fill your heart with the Word of God, and confess it, and meditate on the Word of God, then this inner witness will get stronger and stronger and stronger. More and more frequent, more and more clear, more and more specific, more details. Ah, you understand? Yeah! People who say, I'm led by the Spirit and throw the Bible away, big trouble. Follow me, yeah? One last one. You understand this, huh? If you understand this, please do it. Please do it. In three years' time, not three weeks. Lah. No, oh, three years. Sir. Then I better go to a prophet. Lah. <laughs> uh, and those of you say, I a pastor, I, I lazy want to read. Lah. No more. Lah. I know that's what we're telling you. We don't have to preach a sermon and say, why you should watch television? Why you should always play computer games? Why you should, the benefits of Facebook? No need, ah. Did, did you preach, Pastor? No need. You all like to do it. But we have to preach this because we know you don't like to do it. Why? The devil has conditioned you like shampoo and conditioner. <laughs> we put shampoo, he can't put conditioner. <laughs> no, 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 no. You understand? That's what we're telling you. Your taste buds are wrong. Huh? Your taste is wrong. Wei si ye he hua de lui fa. His delight is not in, you know, L.A. delight, the roti shop. His delight is in the word of the Lord. Okay, lad, come back here. So you get a picture, huh? You fill your heart with the word of God against your own desires because your desires are misplaced. Once the heart is full of the word of God, connection become better, suddenly your taste will change and you will love to read the word of God. That is the sign connection is good. Understand? The pastor, I have, the, I, I have this impression, but I don't know it's from God or from the devil or from me or from the, you know. My question is, what have you been sowing for the last few months? If you spend hours reading on the word of God, and sowing the word of God, chances are you are reaping the voice of? Never mind, like, too hard. Uh, uh, understand, huh? Never mind, come back here. So, one more truth. This truth is everywhere. It's not a, it's not a what do you call, ob obscure truth. It's a central truth. People don't say much about it because it sounds boring, my pastor. An angel came to me last night. Oh, what color shirt you wear? All excited, you see? But the Bible said, I. This is what, this is how the devil has crossed the wires. When wires are crossed, you get smoke. Next, you get fire. Then, everything is gone. Hmm? Masuk angin, keluar asap. Okay. Brother, you, the scripture is coming out. No, huh? Okay. Look at Joshua 1.8. Very quickly. I'll try to finish in five minutes. Joshua 1 says, Let not this book of the Lord depart from thy mouth, but 
Thou shalt meditate. Oh, there it's on. Huh? This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you. Sh- that means not. It's not the. That means not put the Bible in your mouth. Huh? The words. Huh? Uh, yeah. But you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written. For then you will make your way progr- uh, prosperous, and you will have good success. That the last verse uh, in the Hebrew sounds different. The last verse, the actual Hebrew says, then you will have good, make your way prosperous, and you will act wisely in your life. That's the actual Hebrew. You will act wisely, meaning if you spend time in the Word of God, don't let the, don't let the Word of God depart from your mouth, you will end up having divine wisdom to have great success even in these strange battles, power, crazy battles, these dangerous battles. You know, divine wisdom, if you do the above. Now, before we go on, understand this. God is telling Joshua, don't let the law, the word, depart from your mouth. Meaning, let your mouth always be filled with the word of God. Meaning, every time you talk, talk the word of God or talk in line with the word of God. Yeah, that's what he's saying. But, when God said that, he's also saying something ex- implicitly, explicitly, let the word of God flow out of your mouth. But that is has a prerequisite, an implicit, implicit connotation. Means what? Matthew chapter 34, Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, speak. The output of the mouth is predetermined by the content of your heart, especially under pressure. <clears throat> With no pressure, you get, hi, how are you? Everything, oh, hallelujah. When the pressure comes, ah, the real thing comes out. So, what is in your heart will eventually ooze out of your mouth. The devil came and pressed Jesus, if you are a son of God, if you are a son of God. He was full of, not mango juice, but word of God, like a plastic bottle. If you are the word of God, gagrafta. What is gagrafta? It is written. He pressed you. If it is written. Why? Every time the devil pressure him, comes out scripture while Jesus was full of the word of God and the spirit. Full of... He was full of the Holy Spirit, but the, the output of his mouth tells us he is full of the word of... Are you guys following me? Yeah? I hope you are. Huh? So press. Ah, the one full of something else. You press. Oh, the Bible says. <laughs> you are in good shape. Then they will stop pressing you because when you press, the word come out, the word torments him. Mark 6, 5. Mark 6. You five six uh, six five seven ah uh, six seven. Never mind, no time. Yeah. So. So the so 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 God said so Jesus said the 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 output of your mouth is determined by the content of your heart. If you're going to continue to speak the word of God, it presupposes your heart is continuously full of the word of God. Otherwise, you can't do it. Correct? Hey, correct or not? Correct. So God is saying two things in one sentence. He's saying your mouth must be full of the word of God, meaning your heart must also be, let the word of God do originally in your heart. Understand? Understand? Okay. So what? Hi-ya. Look at Numbers numbers 27. With this are N, huh? Oh, praise the Lord. Numbers 27, 18. Quickly, brother. Thank you. So the Lord said to Moses, take Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit, and lay your hand on him. Okay, enough. Here we know, before anything happened, while Moses was still around, Joshua was already filled with the Holy Spirit in the, in the Old Testament way. Okay? Joshua is, was already filled with the Holy Spirit. Look at Deuteronomy 34.9. Deuteronomy 34.9. Yeah, praise the Lord. So the Lord said, remember what the law... No, no, no. 34.9. I read to you. Huh? No, no. Do we have? 34.9. Okay. And Joshua... I read to you. Huh? Are there? And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. Why? Because Moses had laid his hand on him. So the people, okay. So Joshua was 
full of the Holy Spirit. Number two, Joshua, by reason of Moses laying hands on him, received the spirit of wisdom, meaning he received the gifts of the spirit pertaining to wisdom, such as word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits. The point is now, Joshua has Holy Spirit, and he has the wisdom of the Holy Spirit residing in him already. Correct? He can access anytime and get the Holy Ghost, wisdom of God, and act wisely. Correct? Yes or no? Yes or no? But now Moses dies. He has to die. Uh, I mean the Bible Moses. <laughs> Moses dies. Now God talks to Joshua. Remember Joshua already had the spirit of God and the spirit of wisdom inside. The wisdom is inside him. Yet God tells him, hey Joshua, let not the word, the law, depart from your mouth or your heart so that you can act wisely. Why say that? He already had the Holy Ghost. He already had the spirit of wisdom. Already have the gifts of the spirit concerning wisdom inside. He can type into it. Why? What need is there for him to be filled with the, Holy, the word of God to access the wisdom? So God is saying, even though you have the Holy Ghost, even though you have the gifts of the Holy Spirit pertaining to wisdom in you, if you want the access, you got to be filled with the word of God to the point where it's flowing out of your mouth. Then you can connect with him and retrieve all the wisdom because the word of God provides the connectivity to the spirit of God. If you go by anointing, connectivity is temporary. You lay hands on you, the anointing comes on you. Oh, you can hear for a while. After two, after two days, the anointing vaporizes or wanes off. Connectivity also goes off. It's like the olden days data, only 10 gigabyte. Oh no, 3 gigabyte. After that, no more, no more connection. So, so, don't just look for the anointing, which is important. Build on the Word of God. You will have a lasting, continuous connectivity to the Holy Spirit. And it can lead you in all kinds of situations. By the gentle nudge, gentle guidance in you, you'll be amazed what all can happen to you. Good things. Amen. With that, I end. So, what do I do, Pastor, now? I just come down, huh? Quietly come down, huh? Prayer. Okay. Praise God. Let's rise up. If you came here with pain in your body, if you came with neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, any other pain, stomach pain, check yourself and see by now the pain would have gone. And if that's the case, lift up your hand and glorify Jesus. Check and see. Are we going to play some music or what? No, Pastor. Are we? I don't know. Uh, no need, huh? No music. Okay. Imagine the music. Okay, right? Anybody? Your pain left? Check your body. Or oh, all you, you all came without pain, huh? Okay. You came with some pain. Check and see. When we preach the word, according to Luke 5 17, the power of the Lord to heal the sick. Also online, I check will fall, and all the pain will go. Arthritis will go. Anybody? Especially the back pain. Somebody got back pain? Check and see. Just check and see. You, you, you got back pain. Better? Is it better? Is it pain? Better now? That means what? Is it better or not? Yeah, it's better. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, you see. You see, if you don't have all the commotion, hallelujah, yeah. yeah but no, nothing. We just preach the word of God. <laughs> because you can't do now. I don't do, huh? Uh, but you see, the Word of God works regardless of how it is um, uh, delivered and regardless, regardless of how you feel, it will work, my friends. No matter how you feel about your life, if you put chili powder inside, you will feel spicy. I hope so. Huh? Uh, uh, again, yeah. Huh? Anybody give me pain? Please check. Don't be shy. Just check the pain is because I'm, I'm supposed to deliver this to you. Huh? Yeah, is there anybody there? What pain was that? It's gone? Praise the Lord. Give Jesus a clap. Come on, guys.
See, you people are you're so used to somebody come there and yeah, the Lord say up. <laughs> no, he, he, the Lord said long time ago already. He's healing now. That's that sister's seal. This sister's getting healed, man, even more. Anybody else? I sent somebody with the pain around here, back here. Ah, you have get up and check. Is when you check the pain goes. Get up and get up and check, sister. You don't want to get up, you won't work, huh? I come, oh yeah, what's that, sister, what's that? Is it better now? Yeah, praise the Lord. Healing is taking place. At the same time, some of you, if you now open your mind, the Holy Ghost is feeling some of you very gently. He's just doing, hoo, 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 hoo. that's why it's called a dove, not an elephant. It's a dove, it comes. It sometimes it comes like fire. There's no need to, man, because you're all very obedient today. Huh? It comes like a dove. Here, here, this line here, somebody being healed. Right? Pastor, stop me when I'm. Huh? Just stop me, huh? okay? Just stop me, just stop me. <laughs> yeah. Rebo, Kele, Baka. Anybody got a problem with Niao Tai, which is uh, go, uh, urinary bladder or urination problem? I know it's a bit shy to show. Huh? Just God, no. Anybody with bladder problem or urination problem, God is healing right now. Receive, receive. Anybody? Show me your hand. Don't be shy. Sure, God, one night. You don't be shy, yeah? Receive it right now. God, oh, online, online, huh? online. Receive. Thank you, Jesus. We pray, lah. Thank you, Lord. Let not your hearts be troubled, Jesus said. That means you can. Let not your heart be troubled. But that becomes easier when you're led by the Holy Spirit. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will send you another comforter. That word comforter, actually, in the Greek means... Um, Sorry, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. In the Greek means, I will not leave you fatherless. I will not leave you as orphans. But many Christians today are just like that. They go from prophet to prophet to ask for guidance and they say, please tell me what my father is saying. Sounds like orphans. You don't have to be. You can be guided by the Holy Spirit. Pastor, I don't know how. I also don't know how last time. Just spend time with the Word of God because the Word of God is a letter written to you by the Holy Spirit. When you hear the Word of God, you are actually hearing the Holy Spirit. When you obey the Word of God, you are actually following the Holy Spirit. That's the first level. So you fill your heart with the Word of God to abundance. Suddenly, the voice of God will begin to resound. That's resounding in you. Your spirit will rise up and you will hear Him and you can follow Him. Take this seriously. Your life will never be the same. If you don't take it seriously, your life will never change. Amen? Father, I give you praise to the people here. Thank you, Lord. Lord, your glory to fall upon them, touch them. For the, those who are facing financial troubles, right now I pray. Release your angels. Now, if you have a financial problem, right now, release your faith and believe with me. Yeah? Father, we believe, send an, send an angel's master to make connection, to make necessary adjustment for them and clarifying the situation, to bring in new finances to them, new job to them, new, new, new situation in the workplace, business. Bring finances to your people, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Those who are heavy in their heart, this morning release them. Oh, all heaviness to go. All fear to go. All uh, suppressive, depressive, tormenting feelings to go online and on site. Go in Jesus' name. Father, bless your people. Let your face shine upon them. Let new hope rise in their heart. New joy rise in their heart. Oh, for you are doing a new thing. For thus saith the Lord, I cut out rivers in uh, the wilderness and springs of water in sandy places. Woo! In the very places where it looks impossible, God is going to do you a miracle and bring forth that which you desire out of a miracle and a sign and a wonder, saith the Lord. Woo! as a church and as individual is cutting rivers where there's no water is bringing forth springs and water fountains in places that's impossible be it finances be it job be it your health be it this ministry God is sending his river oh hallelujah Father I give you praise in Jesus marvelous name we thank you and pray thank you Holy Ghost Amen 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 thank you all Pastor you can take over from here